All right. Fitness over 45. My fabulous friends, Sherry and Kendra. Hi, ladies. Hi. So we're going to get, we're going to just dive right into this. And in your bios, I read your ages and we're, none of us are really upset about our ages. I think out of the three of us, we all look our best right now over 45 and Sherry, you're 47. I sure am soon to be 48. Like you're turning 48. I know. I know. People, people <laughs> my age and I can't even remember. I'm just like, <laughs> yeah, 21. <laughs> well and Kendra you're 45 you're turning 46 this year yep April April and I'm the yeah. baby I'm the baby out of all of us that never happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm 45 I'm 45 still as well and we're all moms Sherry you have three teenage boys when I read their ages and yep. the fact that there's three teenage boys like I my head mm -hmm. hurts yeah, it, it, <laughs> my head hurts every day. <laughs> well, and I mean, it's thir 13, 15 and 17. So Thanks. you've been with me for 11 years. So when you mm -hmm. first started with me, your one son was young. He was only two years old. Yeah, he was very young. Yeah, yeah. And so you've done the mom fitness juggle for a really long time. And Kendra, your youngest wasn't even born when we started together where was she just born i think she was just born yeah, yeah. so you, she was, yeah because she's 10 so yeah she was just she's yeah. maybe one yeah because i was i was i was reached i had reached out to you and i was thinking of, of waiting because she was just born you're like no 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 so like we just jumped right into it just when she because just when she was first born because i think well i just had a baby and you know maybe next year like no 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 <laughs> we're well, doing this now Let's go back. Let's go back to when I met both of you. Cause I met you and you're both good friends now through coaching with me. You knew each other from the gym kind of before, but you've yeah. had a really nice friendship, which I like, which we'll talk about a little bit later. <laughs> Let's go back. Let's go back to pre Lori coaching you days. Okay. Sherry, we'll start with you. What did your oh. fitness routine look like before you met me? I was a runner. Um, I ran, I did half marathons. I ran in the morning, didn't really weight train. I did a little bit, but it was, you know, like 15 minutes here, 10 minutes there, but it was mostly cardio and running. And that was my regiment. Um, I did, I did a couple step classes, but it was definitely, um, cardio orientated. No, not a lot of weights at all. What about your nutrition? Uh, yeah, not very great. I mean, I did, I did watch what I ate, but I didn't really have that, um, knowledge of what I should be putting in my body. Um, you know, my husband was a personal trainer and he ate well, but you know, it was kind of a lot of more carbohydrates, a little bit of protein. Um, but, and, and I didn't even know like what a good vegetable was, like I was having, you know, the carrots and all that sort of stuff. Um, so it, it wasn't, the knowledge was not there. What about you, Kendra? What were you doing? Cause you were a personal trainer as well. Yeah. Yep. I and was. What was your routine like before you met me? Uh, I think, well, I think Sherry and I kind of met in probably step classes. So we, we did quite a few of those together. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, I did. I did love my cardio, but I, I was doing weights then. Like I was, and I remember way back in those, um, Fitwell's days that, uh, there wasn't many people like maybe me and one other person, like, you know, in the weight room lifting. So it, it was kind of nice, but yeah, but I, I did incorporate weights back then, but nothing like I do now. Like I thought I kind of knew what I was doing, being a personal trainer and, um, but I, I kind of did both of it, but mainly my focus was cardio. I think I felt like I had to do more cardio than I did with, with lifting weights. Well, and what about your nutrition? What was your nutrition like? Oh, well, I'm a, my name is Kendra and I'm addicted to sugar. <laughs> um, I, I would try to, I would try to eat like, cause I wanted to be a good example for my clients and, you know, I wasn't a, a nutritionist by any means, but I would try to, um, you know, to eat well, but, um, my problem was I never ate enough. Mm -hmm. And so I just remember when I first started, you know, training with you and I'm like, what, you want me to eat all this? Like, you know, 
I thought we had the same goals. Like I'm trying to lose, you know, the baby weight. And that's when I, when my body did the switch, I hold on to that last little bit of baby weight. And that's when I was able to lose it, you know, when I made that switch, but yeah, I just never really ate enough. And, and um, yeah, now, now I know the importance, right. Of eating like six small meals a day and, you know, getting it all in and all those like carbs and, and the uh, proteins and, you know, those combinations, right. Where I never really thought about that before. I was just kind of eating it to eat it, you know, oh, this is healthy. I'll eat this. Well, and I think looking at your physiques, let's talk about what your physiques looked like when you started with me as well. So you're, you were both cardio junkies. You were both doing a lot of cardio. You were at a ladies only gym. So that's why the the weight room was empty. I I remember I worked at a lot of ladies only gyms where I was the only one that was lifting weights. And I did the step classes too. Don't get me wrong. What did you guys look like with very little calories or not enough protein and so much cardio? What did your bodies look like? Not a body I want again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I never, but I never had that. So, I mean, it took me a lot of years. To <laughs> yeah. Too many step classes. Hey, eh? we had too many cardio. We were like working our asses off, like literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What about I, you, Sherry? I, I had that, um, as we all call it, that fat, skinny running body, um, <laughs> kind of kind of very, very flat looking. Um, and this, there's no, there was no definition. There was no, yeah, no bum. It, it was just kind of flat. It was there, but it was flat. <laughs> it was now didn't have that brown booty or anything. So yeah, no, definitely. Booty. Like you said, I, I, I don't want to go back there. <laughs> Well, and I remember, Sherry, not that we, we weren't being mean when we were saying this, because you were thin, you were, you were skinny, you were, you were small, but we used to call you yes. Ruby. We used to, when I would describe your yes. midsection, your abs, <laughs> yes. I was like, why are, why are you all ribs? Like, where are your abdominal muscles in there? And now, I mean, you, you have shredded six pack, you, you have it, but it took us a lot of years to get. Oh to yeah. I still remember quite a few competitions where I still looked really ribby. It took, it took many years to actually get some sort of abdominal cavity <laughs> there. <laughs> it was, well, it was a while. <laughs> We fast forward, we fast forward now. And I mean, it was a journey for sure, because and like Kendra said at first, when I told you, you had to eat more and it was a lot more, you probably thought I was crazy. And even oh, Sherry, okay. yours was more the don't run, don't do cardio, yeah. you know, stop marathon running and hit the weight room. And it's hard because yeah. you guys didn't know me. No, and you're, you're blindly coming into it, trusting me. And mm-hmm. it, it was baby steps. You know, at yeah. first you, you hold on to the cardio. You maybe don't eat quite all of the food that I'm giving you. No. And you sneak in extra cardio. I remember sneaking in my <laughs> runs. I'm like, Ooh, she catches me. Thank goodness. She lives in Mabel. <laughs> She'll never see me. <laughs> I don't see any extra <laughs> well, I always, t- I tell the story though, of my best friend now, Patty, when I first started training her, she lived a block away from me. And when I cut out all of her cardio, I remember driving home from the grocery store and I drove past her running. And as she saw my car coming towards her, she just kind of hit a wall and stopped and was like, <laughs> just walking. Right. Like she just was very like, Oh my God, did she see me? Nicole? But it's hard because it's hard to trust because we believe what the media has told us. We believe all of the myths. And and my daughter the other day in the kitchen, I think I almost had a heart attack. I have an 18 year old daughter and she's trying to lose weight and she's been doing the, and her mom's personal trainer. So she doesn't want to hear anything I have to say to help <laughs> her lose weight. And when she said to me, you know, I'm not seeing any results. I think I need to do more cardio. I think I had a heart attack and I kind of gave her a look of, can I please give you some advice? I know I'm not allowed to overstep, but that's one of my biggest pieces of of advice for any women, especially is Mm -hmm. get the heck out of the cardio machine room and running Mm -hmm. and hit the weights. Yeah. Yeah. And you'll transform. And did she take it? Was she open to having your your advice? She kind of rolled her eyes at me and just kind of wandered <laughs> upstairs. It takes a lot. Again, she's my daughter well, and she doesn't want to hear her. Our kids usually don't want to listen to us about anything. But never, never, never. I kind of said to her, maybe you should read my book because I do talk about cardio in there and how we overtrain with cardio. And 
I mean, a lot of women now, they they'll message me and they want to look like you guys. And first of all, it's, it's taken us 11 years to transform, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the skinny fat runners and, and under eaters to how you look today. And we're still a work in progress. We're still always getting the glutes better. Yeah. Always. But I like Sherry, what you said about everybody wants a booty. Now the, the piece, the bum is in big, bad booty. They don't realize that the running and the step classes and even the spin classes and things are making it flatter yeah. and not as nice. Yeah. There's many, many times that I've been at the gym and people have asked me, you know, how I want, I want to get a bum. And I'm like, well, and then they're running uh, constantly <laughs> at, a, at a, you know, for 35 minutes running on the treadmill. And I'm like, get <laughs> get off and start training, band train, do something else. Then. <laughs> but it's that mindset. And, and I, I really sympathize with people because when I was running and you told me to stop running, I, I had to get it through my mind that this is okay. This is, this is a good thing, right? But it takes, it takes a while for your mind to switch. And until you start seeing that results, then you realize, yeah, this, this is the way to go. I don't have to be on that machine for an hour a day. I don't have like to be out to running. Train, right? You have to retrain your brain. Right. We're so yeah. that way, right? Then you have to retrain your brain that, I know it's hard, right? Because we even struggle with times, right? Like doing yeah. no cards. Yeah. Oh, sometimes I feel like, hmm, should I be doing something? <laughs> Kendra, <laughs> I, I laugh. I laughed, okay. I laughed at you, Kendra, because I have all my podcasts out. And the three of us were having a conversation and you said, I have to be honest, I haven't listened to any of your podcasts, Lori, because yeah. I don't have any cardio on my plan I- <laughs> where I have time. <laughs> that's true. Like if I'm on like, you know, walking or, or anything, that's when I put it in, right? And, you know, and, and listen to it. <laughs> that wasn't a bad thing. That's not a bad thing. No. <laughs> but I, find, I find both of you because you are at your best right now. So you're, you've got, you're at your best physiques at 47 and 45. And that's a myth in the industry is that as mm-hmm. we get older, everything, everything looks worse. Everything drops and sags and, and it's, or you just give up or like, what's the point? Why bother? Yeah. I couldn't imagine, imagine my life, like just like, like, physically, emotionally, spiritually, I would not be a good person (laughs) if I didn't do something. Right. Like, I think you can attest to that. Right. Like, I think I just, I just need it to be just to be well-rounded, right. To not really hurt my day. (laughs) And so now let's talk. Go ahead. ahead. No, I just, I just think that it, it is a, a something that keeps you sane when you're so busy and you're juggling so many different things, that's one thing in my life that I, that I know that I can go and enjoy and just be by myself. And, and, and it kind of levels me out. Yeah. Well, because when you're a mom, everything becomes about the kids. Cause you're also both career women as well. So you're mm-hmm. not stay at home moms. Uh, you have careers. Sherry, you commute when COVID wasn't around. Yeah quite far, yeah. a, an hour mm-hmm. each way into town. Kendra, yeah. you run a very busy company and then we, there's kids. So the fitness is almost like it could get on the back burner. And if it's not there, Kendra, like you said, you know, you, sorry, I'm just hitting that one. You, you need it for your sanity. Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And you just have to make it work, right? You know, and everybody's schedules are different and you just kind of figure it out, right? Fit it in. And so let's talk about fitting it in. And Sherry, how do you fit it in? Because you you both have done competitions for years and years. Sherry, you've done 15 competitions. Yes. Kendra, oh you've done God. nine, I think <laughs> this is we're on. How do you fit it in? What time of day are you going to the gym? Um, uh, you go ahead. Oh, oh, um, as for me, I find, um, seven o'clock in the morning, best thing for me. Um, that's the only time I can get it in because I work from, you know, eight 30 to, to four, four 30. Um, I don't find I have a lot of energy after work. So the best time for me is first thing in the morning and I'm a morning person. I'm up really early. So why not get it in while everybody's sleeping it doesn't disrupt anything throughout the day and um, it kind of sets, sets my day. So that's what I find best. Kendra, what about you? 
Yeah, I agree. Um, but well, before the gym, when, when the gym was open, I would get up at 430, like quarter to five and get it in because then I get come back and start the day with the kids at seven. So now I get to sleep in a little bit because I just have to go into my garage. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> but that took a little while. I like to self-motivate because you're used to, you know, leaving and going to a gym. So now I've kind of motivated myself and I go. So I do it in the morning. So at about quarter to six or so before the kids and before I start the day. But, um, you know, sometimes that doesn't happen. And, um, you know, when I got sick and energy is low, so I'll just go in and do it on my lunch hour. Cause you know, I have that, I have that, uh, that beautiful benefit, right? I can just walk across the kitchen floor into the garage, <laughs> transform, work clothes, gym clothes. <laughs> well, and I was the same. I, I through all of my competition years and I, through all of the years of training, I've always had to do it in the morning because once those kids have their feet hit the floor in the morning, I become yeah. mom, a mom and coach to my clients and I, I know I won't do it later. So I make myself get up and it used to be 5 a.m. and now it's six and I do it before any of the teenagers are up and need their rides everywhere or it's it's just my way of knowing I'm getting it done and I don't have to worry about it later. Yeah, because yeah. that's, that's the rest of it throughout your day, right? Is that like, you know, trying to rush through this and that and going here and there and then, you know, rushing through it to get it done and it's, it's hard, yeah. So well, I definitely- talk- Let's talk about another myth in the industry, because we see this a lot too. And that's that you have to do two workouts a day, three workouts mm-hmm. a day, two hours, three hours at the gym a okay. day. What's the, what, how long do you each go to the gym each day? I don't know who has time for that in their schedules. <laughs> do that. I, <laughs> we'd be so lucky. Right. But, um, cause we love it, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, an hour max, like really. So 45 minutes, 45 minutes. If I was to do, you know, my program now, um, just full out, but in between like doing emails and this and that, like when I'm an hour max, that's it. Yeah. Sherry, what about you? I'm usually about an hour, an hour, maybe an hour and five minutes, depending on my workouts, um, and how much I yap my mouth, but usually, (laughs) usually an hour it's in an hour. Our workouts. (laughs) Yeah, <laughs> when we're texting each other. <laughs> well, I remember, I remember too, Sherry, when you would do it on your lunch break at work sometimes, and you mm-hmm. had to shower. You still had to. Yeah. You didn't have a lot of time. Like you had like no. four minutes. Yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah, when I was working um, in the morning, I re- literally had probably maybe 40, 42 minutes, and I had to shower and get to work. So it was, it was quick, but it was good. I mean, because it made me go from station to station, and, and you know, and and. 40, 42 minutes was enough. That was good. Yeah. Well, and that's where the myth is. And it makes my head hurt when I see women, especially thinking they have to be at the gym twice a day, seven days yeah. a week. Do you take rest days? That's another myth that we see a lot in the industry. And I just got a new client that hasn't taken a day off from working out in years and her body needs oh. it. My body hurts just thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I look oh. forward to my, I look forward to my Sunday. It's my binge day, Netflix day, uh, yeah. bed days. And that's, yeah, no, I, I find enough exercise on Sundays cleaning beds. So that's good enough for me. <laughs> I can't believe I used to do this six days a week. And as I've gotten older, that, that became five. And then, I mean, I'm at about four now and I look better than I did doing six. So I always, yeah. I always think if more is just more, it's not necessarily better. Um, no, there is that- a big- is overtraining too right like when you overtrain Mm -hmm. have like the like the reverse benefits of so I think as we get older we we're a lot smarter (laughs) and I think the older you get the more you you can injure your body and I just I don't want to do that I I don't have time to be injured I really don't we don't do right we don't bounce back (laughs) and so now (laughs) let's talk about the competing part of what you guys do because you're also not the typical bikini competitors that you see out there that are super focused on themselves. That's kind of their full-time focus. It consumes their lives. They're living in the gym. It's all about them. They're living the dream, right? What, how do you fit competing in your lives? Because Sherry, I mean, actually both of you, I looked on your social media 
it's not really a big focus for you on social media. I usually see you post pictures of like you drinking wine together after the show. <laughs> the best part, elevator <laughs> selfies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, no, we, we're, we've never <laughs> been people that post our progress, our foods are, you know, look at me, uh, you know, beast mode, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So much that killing you it. see. <laughs> killing it. <laughs> no. And, and you know what, I always like to go into a competition and nobody knows I'm competing and then you just show up and there yeah. you are. And that's the way we roll. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, well, and why do each of you do it? Kendra, I'll start with you. Why do you do it? Because you've done it nine times, right? Year uh -huh. after year. Yeah, long time. Um, I love doing it as long as like Sharon and I do it together. Like that's like a huge thing. Um, yeah. And it's just a focus, right? Like I'm like, I'm not a runner. I'm not a cross. I don't do CrossFit. Like I don't, I don't know. It's just kind of, it's, it's, it's my sport. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Sherry, what about you? Um. You know, I, I enjoy, well, like Kendra said, I enjoy it because, you know, you have someone that you're doing it with, um, you can correspond with each other. Um, and you know what, it fits into my life. It's not, it, like you said, it doesn't consume me. Um, I, I, I have, you know, three boys and a husband. It's my sort of girly thing that I like to do. Um, I like to watch my body transform and I like to better, you know, I like to go into competition and see what changes I can make in that competition. And it, it's, I don't know, it's my girly thing. And, and yeah, I don't know, like I said, maybe I'll be 65 stepping on that stage with my walker and everything. I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, we will. <laughs> and you've said that to me, like, I know when you hit 40, you were like, Oh my God, I'm 40. Like, am I, how long are you going to let me do this for? And even when you hit 45 and I said, well, you keep getting better, both of you. So why would you stop? And it's not right. hurting your life and it's not impacting your life. And, you know, no. Kendra, you'll, you're, you're, you have a very social life in terms of a lot of your friends enjoy, you know, drinking and having a good time. You just make sure you time the competition so that you can still have a life and do all of that, you know, like enjoy your summer or whatever it might be. Yeah, I do. Like I'm, I'm married to Mr. Social Butterfly, so he's, <laughs> um, but I can still do that because I like to be in bed early so I can still socialize with, with him and with them. And then I can go about my own, right. Go about my way. I'm like, I'm good. And, um, so yeah, we just kind of make it work. Right. Then it's, and I live in wine country, so it's like wine all the time. So I need something to <laughs> Well, and I was just going to bring that up next. Another myth is that you can't drink or have like any alcohol, the whole prep or, or any time. I, I had a lady that came to me just for life that she wanted to train and she assumed that she was going to have to give up alcohol completely. She has the wrong coach. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I have to say to her. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We make it work. <laughs> yeah. You, we do. At least once a week. I mean, it's not like we have to be drinking every single day. Um, yeah. Although, I mean, there are times where I think all of us have had, you know, a few times a week too many. <laughs> yep. But that doesn't happen all the time. I mean, Kendra, you're drinking right now. <laughs> But, like, but she's like where are your glasses why am I the only one drinking? all right so we are still drinking more wine and we're still talking <laughs> <laughs> there may be more wine poured here uh it's not 10 in the morning though so it's, it's in the afternoon nope. so yeah we're good <laughs> there's been a lot of myths and now you are both at your best you talked about fitting competitions into your lives what's next because when you're at your best at 45 almost 46 and 47 almost 48 what what's next for each of you oh you go ahead Can okay you go? well i'm hoping like with this covid that um things go back to somewhat normal and um Shira and i will be doing nationals in july <laughs> fingers crossed <laughs> That's our plan. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The thing that I like though about you two, as opposed to what I see in the industry is you paused because it's not like competing is a huge part of your life. If there's a show there, there's a show there. 
And if there's not, you still keep going to the gym and you still keep eating well and you still keep drinking your wine in moderation. And it's just Mm -hmm. part of your life and, and fitness fits into your life without consuming it. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. The lifestyle, right? I know that sounds, but it is, it's, it's, it's a lifestyle. This is us. I still, (laughs) I still meal meal prep, but whether I'm on season, off season, just doing life. Um, it just, every Sunday, that's what we do. And it's just, it's easier, you know, especially when you're busy and you just, you're, you have all your meals prepped and you can just go in the fridge and grab something instead of, you know, getting into the cupboard where I'm not eating chips and chocolate and all that good stuff. <laughs> well, and as a, as a mom, I mean, as a mom, I look back and I remember when I was in, in college and you could, you could almost have nothing in the house. Like it was that easy to just, you know what? I'm not eating it because it's not in the house. We all have kids. We all have teenage kids. Yeah. There's the chips. There's the pop. There's the candy for the sugar. I'm a sugar girl too. It's mm-hmm. all there still. It has to be. Kids have to eat everything in moderation. They want all the treats. How do you how do you say no to that? How do you kind of say not that you say no to it because you do get it when you want it, but how do you not overconsume that? Um, I I usually um say you know what um Saturday night Saturday day is kind of my day um and I'm very good at at not um you know eating what they're eating um they're I'm very lucky they're not really um I mean they've grown up with me and my husband so they're not really junk food junkies like we do have chips and we do have um candies and stuff but they they tend to eat healthy too. Uh, I'm, I'm very lucky that way. So, um, but, but I do have a child who likes baking cookies and, and I love raw co- cookie dough. That is my downfall. I'd rather have a lot of raw cookie dough than eat it. Yeah. Well, it's a cookie. <laughs> eat it. <laughs> oh, eat it. <laughs> Actually my, my trick to that is when I'm making those cookies, I stick about three pieces of gum in my mouth. So I can't eat it because there's gum in my mouth. And that's my trick. <laughs> That's my trick. I'm going to try that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my trick. Yeah. And what about you, Kendra? What about, do your kids like junk? Yep. Yeah. My daughter, my daughter, yeah. Eats uh, Nutella every day. <laughs> uh, loves chocolate. That's like a staple in her, in her diet. Yeah. And, um, but I have chips and I have all that. Um, but when they go to grandma's, it's grandma says no. So whatever they want, they get. I don't feel like I have to have it all to buy, like have it here, but, um, I, I'm not as diligent as Sherry. I'm so I have her, <laughs> so she, I have to butter her to tell us. So then I have to have some, <laughs> but it doesn't, that's the thing too. And that's the myth that you have to be 120% all the time no, when you are fit all the time, when you have the glass of wine on a Thursday, or I'm sure we're all going to have two or three glasses of wine. <laughs> and maybe by accident some of the cookie dough falls in your mouth when you're making it it doesn't affect your goals it's not like you have to throw yourself down the staircase like it's it's a yeah. minor hiccup it doesn't yeah. matter it doesn't affect you yeah, yeah. it has rest, rest rest yourself yourself yep exactly yes. <laughs> and so now in terms of advice what would be I'll start with you, Kendra. What would be your biggest piece of advice to someone that is like, I really wish I could, I could be fit. I wish I could be a mom. I wish I could be fit. What would your biggest advice be to someone who's just kind of trying to find their way? Um, I, I know this because I give it to, I have friends that are, you know, in their fifties and their moms and they have careers and they're like, I just wish, but you know, they complain about this and that. And I'm like, but what do you do? right? What do you do? You don't do anything. But um, the best advice would be you don't be overwhelmed. Just, you know, we all start somewhere, whether it's just you take that 10 minutes in the morning to meditate, to stretch, go for a walk on your lunch, go for a walk, you know, little things, right? Like grab a band, you know, Mm -hmm. and, you know, it's, it's not hard, but if you get too overwhelmed and you don't know where to start, then, then you don't start. So it's just, just start wherever you have to just start. To start, I like that. Sherry, what about you? What would be your biggest advice be to someone? Um, 
my biggest advice would be um, find, find a friend that wants the same goals as you. So you're accountable to somebody. You're accountable to say, hey, let's meet. Let's meet at the gym. Um, I, I have Kendra who, you know, that we, every competition we do, um, we're, we're accountable to each other. That that's a different thing, but saying going to the gym, uh, find a, find a friend that wants mm-hmm. the same goals as you. So you guys can go together and, and start small, start small. Yeah. Well, and you too, as well, we don't all live in the same city. So you have it, like your little accountability. You're excited to do mm-hmm. shows together. But it is with yeah. text. It's a text or an email. It's not necessarily yeah. you holding hands at the gym together and being able no. to be workout partners, right? No. Every day. No. Every time, hey. <laughs> yeah. Put the show I, down. <laughs> I just I just think that um starting off, um, if you if you want to go to the gym or you choose something else, I think the most thing is that people feel uncomfortable doing it. So I think if you were with somebody, when I first started at the gym, I had a friend, I, t- I went with her all the time. And then after a while, you just, it's the norm. So you can go by yourself. You can go at any time. Um, I, I just, you know, everybody starts somewhere and yeah, you got to find your comfort. Yeah. What is something, and I'll start, I'll go Sherry, I'll go right back to you with this one. What's something you wish you knew in the past about fitness or nutrition that you know now? Oh gosh, the, the, the myth about the cardio. <laughs> Do you know how many hours I spent oh. doing cardio and wasted my life? Yes. <laughs> that is the myth. That is the true myth. Yeah. What about you, Kendra? And, and, oh, go ahead, Sherry. No, and the fact that, um, you know, when we were younger, we thought picking up a weight would make you bulky and big and look like a man. That's, yeah. that's another. <laughs> no. What about you, Kendra? Um, for me, I think it's just, um, you know, like just the, the, the mindset, right. Of like, you know, doing, you know, if, if, you know, you don't have your nutrition in this, but if you put the extra in for, you know, you, I can eat shit or whatever, but I'm just going to like do an extra 20 minutes of cardio kind of thing. Right. Like just being more knowledgeable because it's, it's a billion dollar industry, right. That, and they just fly into, you know, take this pill or drink this or do that. Um, it's just having the knowledge, right. That it's, you know, mm-hmm. move, just move and eat whole foods and, you know, and it's just a lifestyle, right. Don't buy into all those fads. Well, and let's talk, since we're talking about all of that kind of stuff, <laughs> let's talk fads. Let's talk, well, we'll start with supplements because the supplement industry is huge. And I've yeah. always been a big preacher on the fact that I only use pr- protein powder. I've, I, it's been a decade since I've bought a supplement at a supplement store. Sherry, what supplements do you use? Uh, a protein powder and um, a protein powder. <laughs> and I, I may, um, cause my, my husband uses um, a pre-workout, uh, maybe once a month pre-workout. Uh, um, my pre-workout is a coffee. So yeah, you know, protein powders. I don't, I don't take any, creatine. I don't do BCAAs. I I just, I don't, I don't, it's uh, to me, I I just, I think it's a chemical. I don't know that that's my thoughts about it. I know that's a whole, you know, everybody has their own opinion, but, um, protein powder. That's What about you, Kendra? A chemical shit storm. Is that what you're looking for? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, That was the word. (laughs) Yeah. Um, I, I do protein powder, um, but I do like a pre-workout. I think too, it's another kind of myth maybe that I have in my head that, especially if I'm up at 530 that, you know, I need to drink this to get me going kind of thing. Um, yeah. And that's it. I think too, um, I think because we drink so much water that it is an actual flavor to a water that you like, I, you know, like it's just something different than good old water. It has a flavor to it. There's something, there's, something, you know, getting your workout in really early and drinking water and then like having a pre-workout. I don't know that that's, that's me, but I mean, I, I, I mean, we have, we have gone without it when, you know, we can't have it in our prep, but yeah, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of the shit storm. (laughs) And the thing is, is you like it. It's something, it's not something I prescribe, but it's always something that I leave as optional because I'm, I don't, I've never been a pre-workout girl because it just doesn't make me feel good. But I yeah. know that a lot of my clients, as soon as I'm telling them to cut that out, because it does bloat you a little bit. It's a, it's chemicals, right? Um, 
I know what you're all crying about it. You know, the ones that yeah. do like it, but like Sherry said, I mean, a good old you know, coffee. Coffee, coffee or, or food. And, and that's the next myth in the industry that I see a lot. What about carbs? Have you both been carb free, carbohydrate, keto, no carbs? What do you both think about the no carb diets? Oh I'm God, no. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> or angry. <laughs> Yeah. No. Well, well, no. I'll start with you, Kendra. I'm going to start with you okay. because when you started with me, you were not a vegetarian and you are now. Yep. You, when you're a vegetarian, I'm sorry, you're not keto. You're not no carb or you're, that's just not eating because you have a very carb heavy program now being a vegetarian. I do. Yes. Yeah. And it just happens to agree with me. Um, I've always found that I've operated um, better with carbs you know, like I know some people, like if they have their protein, but carbs, it, my body reacts to better. Um, I just, yeah, it's, it's not good without carbs and just, you know, I'm not like vegan. I think I'm, I'm pescatarian, I guess, cause I have eggs and fish. So, I, but yeah, that's a huge staple, a huge staple in my diet. Sherry, what about you? Have you ever, have oh. we ever done a plan with no carbs? <laughs> no, that carbs is my brain food. I'm stupid without carbs, really stupid. And I can't be stupid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, well, no. But but that's yeah. a myth. People see, you know, I, I just had someone say to me the other day, I, I'm thinking of going keto and I just have to like bite my uh-huh. tongue and just kind of be like, why? <laughs> um, but again, I have the two of you who have never looked better and are aging. I mean, we're all aging and yeah. you both have a good amount of carbs and always have. Yeah. Yeah. I, I couldn't so- do it without. If, if you took that away from me, I wouldn't enjoy prep and I don't think I would compete. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, and even for, even for real life, I always just think like, why do we feel like we need to suffer? Right. And that's where I've heard it from both of you actually, where you'll hear other people in the gym and you'll say to me, Sherry, like, are we doing enough? Like, why are these people doing so much? Why are they suffering? Oh. Why? Like, I like that you're both so educated now because we've been doing this so long. Of why are we doing it that way, right? Or feel yeah. like, oh, you know, right? Because we're only doing an hour. It's like, what should we be doing? <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna finish with rapid fire with you both. Oh, so I'm just gonna do rapid fire questions. You're gonna burst out the first answer that comes oh. to your mind. Uh, <laughs> it's it's fairly it's PG. Come on, it's not. It's oh, not okay. Cute. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Kendra, I'll start with you. What's your favorite body part of, on yourself? My eyes. Your eyes. Sherry? <laughs> uh, I'd say my calves. <laughs> your calves. I like it. You do. You have nice calves. <laughs> I told I told that, so I'm starting to like them. I'm starting to embrace them. <laughs> what's, okay. what's your bucket list item, Kendra? What's a bucket list item of yours? Ooh. My bucket list. Um, well, right now I have a bucket list that I did for my 2021 is um, just get, doing um, hikes because mm. there's so many hike, hiking trails. Um, so I have 21 hiking trails on my bucket list for 2021. Oh, that's nice. Local that, that are local. Yeah. I'm sure. What about you? African safari. Oh, I like that one too. I'm waiting for my boy. <laughs> I know. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for my boys to get a little bit older and we are doing it. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Kendra, mm. your celebrity crush. Um, I always go back to Brad Pitt. I don't know. Oh, you took mine. <laughs> oh, dear. We're friends. <laughs> he is we can single. Share. He is single, ladies. He is single. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Skinny dip, yay or nay? Oh, I yes. <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> well, I already know the answer to this one, but for our listeners, what is your beverage, your alcoholic beverage of choice? <laughs> Sherry. Oh, mine, mine would be red wine. I have white right now, but I love my red. Yeah. But we all know, Lori, what happens to me when I drink too much red wine? <laughs> we won't say. <laughs> not a good, not a good night out. <laughs> Kendra, what about you? Um, I'm white, white with ice. Yeah. Me too. Are you Pinot Grigio? Pinot Grigio, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Me too. I, 
discovered um, like a Chardonnay. I always thought Chardonnay was sweeter, but now mm. I guess I'm reverting back to a Chardonnay. So between a Pinot, yeah. I'm a yeah. Pinot Grigio snob. Like that's it. Ice yeah. has to be. Uh, what is your current binge watch on Netflix? Oh, um, Yellowstone. Love it. I'm going to be I back. I tried Yellowstone. I don't know. Maybe I don't like cowboys. I don't How know. Far did you get through the first, like the first episode? I got like halfway through the first one. Okay. You have to, you have to watch, go watch it through. Cause I almost turned it off too. Yeah. And yeah. Cause I was like, what really cowboy Indian kind of, <laughs> oh, but oh, once I got past that. Yeah. I binge watched. What about you, yeah. Sherry? You know what? I'm not watching anything as of right now. I just finished that Wentworth and I loved it. So, so good. That, that was my next one. We would oh, never, you love it. We, Sherry and I would never survive in prison. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd be the, I'd be the crime. <laughs> What's your favorite body part to train Kendra? Oh, I'm glutes. Glutes and shoulders. Cause I, that's all I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what about you? Uh, mine shoulders definitely shoulders that's awesome yeah and the last one what is your favorite food kendra like on prep or off let's go let's <laughs> go favorite healthy kind of diet prep food and favorite cheat food um i love fish tacos yeah a, a good fish taco um and a cheap food i always do sushi like the deep fried the deep fried spicy sushi. What about yeah. you, Sherry? Um, on prep would be rice cakes with almond butter and lots of sea salt. Lots of Ooh. sea salt. <laughs> um, my cheat meal would probably be. I'm gonna say I'm, I'm gonna say between sushi and. Oh, yeah, I think sushi would be my go-to. That's awesome. Yeah, mm. yeah. So to recap, to recap, I mean, because this is a lot. I mean, I think we dispelled a lot of myths that we've got. You guys are super hot. You're over 45. You're getting better and better and better. You let go of the cardio junkie mentality. You embrace mm -hmm. eating, eating more food. You embrace eating more carbs. You're still able to juggle being moms. You're still able to juggle your careers. You're still enjoying this. And that's where I think in the industry, we think we're working out almost as punishment to our bodies, yeah. right? You ate that, you're a bad person. So now you got to go burn off the calories or you're unhappy with how your body looks. So you're going in to change it. Whereas I really think that with you two, both of you, you're just improving all the time. You're happy with how you look. You both love working out and you're doing things that you like to do and enjoy. Do you agree? Do you agree with me? Like, do yeah. you think that's what gives you the, the long-term sustainability is because it fits and you like it. Yeah. And it's like, it's, it's therapeutic. It's our therapy. Like Sherry said, it's our time, right? We do it for us and now, yeah, we enjoy it. Yeah. And then that for anybody, right? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and it's, it's almost like it's not grueling, like, oh, I have to go work out. Well, no, you want to, and you like the workouts and it's not too long and you're not living in the gym um, and the food you like. Yeah. And, the, uh, you, and, and the food, it actually makes you feel better um, eating healthy. I mean, we all know what it's like the next day after you have this disgusting cheat meal and you just, your body just doesn't respond to it very well. Um, we've all been there. We've all, I mean, after our competitions, me and Kendra eat so oh. much. We <laughs> are in like a, a fetal position going, oh, why did we do story. that? Like, <laughs> story. Yeah, it doesn't make- Next one, next one, <laughs> we'll learn. <laughs> it doesn't make your body feel good. So why not put something in your mouth that actually fuels your body and makes you feel good? just just my thoughts what would your last what would your last piece of advice be say there's say there's a 45 year old woman sitting at home and they're thinking I, I can't do this I can't start now or a 40 year old or a 35 year old that's sitting at home thinking you know what I'm never going to have my dream body I might as well just give up what would you say to them Sherry you go oh 
uh, I'd say do it. I mean, I think the older you get, the, the stronger you are, the more you've, you've been through. Um, I believe you can do anything at, at, at our, our age, uh, you know, 30, 30 and upwards. Um, you can do it. You can. And, and start small. Like we've all said, start small, you know, just move, just go for little walks and then up that up. Um, you know, it, it, you always have to start small. I wouldn't be digging in deep and going hard when you're just starting off. Uh, I say move and you'll feel so much better. What about you, Kendra? Yeah, I, I, I think like age is only a number. And I think, you know, um, you know, you just, you can do anything you put your mind to. And if it's something that you want to do and, you know, like just start small, just get up and move and you'll surprise yourself. Right. Well, and it's funny. I think we, we compare ourselves to the 20 somethings and, <laughs> and then, but we do, but then at the, at the end of the day, when you sit back, I know I do it and I'll be cocky here. We look better than a lot of 20 somethings. We look better than a lot of 30 somethings because we are doing it the right way. We are doing it a better way and we've put in the time. So it's That's never too late to start, just start, just do it. And don't worry about age. Yeah. Don't no. worry about any don't worry about age or anybody else or anybody else thinks you just got to do it for you and, you know, set your goals and attainable and just, and just start and pick away at it, you know, yeah. a little bit at a time and you'll be surprised, you know, three months, six months. And, you know, or 11 years later, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I've said it, I've said it before. I honestly believe that even when each of you will say to me, cause Sherry, you, you even said last year to me, Oh, I think I'm done. Like, I just, I don't think <laughs> yeah. I'm going to do this anymore. And I do, I do see you both doing this for a really long time ahead. And it doesn't mean that we have to do it every year, but I do. I, I think you'll be the 60 year olds on stage. And, and I don't think that's a bad thing, especially if you are still crushing goals and feeling like you're your best. And you're such inspiration to so many other women because you're able to do the juggle of being a mom, being a career woman, and still looking hot as heck. Yeah. I think we have to be the best versions of ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think we just doing it together, like Sherry and I, we just enjoy it. And it's, it's our thing. And, you know. Yeah. And until we find something else, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Gives us yeah. reasons to get together. That's exactly. great. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming on here, ladies. Yeah. I'll definitely have you back on because we have a lot we can definitely cover. I love that we dispelled a lot of the myths and hopefully we've just opened some eyes to what you can do over 30, 30 over 35, over 40, over 45 at any age. Mm -hmm. And as a woman, just finding the right path to getting there. Like, let's start let's forget about the cardio. Let's make sure we have carbs and let's do it almost the opposite of what we've been told by the industry and in the past. Yeah. So thank yeah. For, thanks for coming on. Enjoy you your so wine. Enjoy your wine. I'm jealous now. I got to go. I got to go. Pour <laughs> <some>. <laughs> thank, Bye. thank you. Bye ladies.